set and match. Oh, shut the gate. They're going to do it again. The Kanaka million goes with and stays with. Kia ora, good evening. You are here with Boys Get Paid on another Thursday night coming at you live from the Export Beer Garden Studio. It is fantastic to have your company with us as always. I'm Matt. Luke isn't here again, unfortunately. He's at a wedding, but Dan and I are here to hold the fort down again for another Thursday night. How are you, Dan? Yeah, good, mate. Good, mate. We can't all be away glamorously drinking wine and having good times at uh, weddings. We actually don't know where Luke is, do we? No idea. Didn't disclose. He did tell me. Right, you forgot. I, just can't, I can't remember. Oh, he's on a bus this afternoon, which like, I can't imagine Luke on a bus. Yeah, I think it was a bus between the terminal and the plane. Probably his bus oh. to his private jet or something. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, eh? I was flying Tesla or some shit like this. I don't know, eh? Yeah. Good on you, Luke. Wherever you are, mate, I hope you're having a great time and, uh, yeah, have a good wedding this weekend. But, uh, yep, we're here to get it done again, and thank you very much to everybody that's here to join us. Big weekend of racing this weekend. It is the Oaks weekend. We've got the Oaks, Cuddle Stakes, Wellington Guineas, Lightning Handicap out of Trentham, where Dan and I recently have sucked, um, bad punting, but a few, a few of the community have done quite well. Hopefully we can turn that form around tonight. Um, because we're looking forward to going through some of those races. Remember to get your best bets in. Regan Carter, Davey last week had infer at Ellerslie, and that was a bit of a blowout, Dan. Yeah, it was t- it was a tough watch. I had a bet on infer, and it uh, just looked like it never got going and didn't look like it wanted to be there. There was an issue I saw in the Stipe report, because I had to have a look back and think, that's gone too bad to be true, and there was a bit of an issue. So that's unfortunate from Regan, got the $100 bet uh, and couldn't get the job done, because I thought it was a good bet like you. Yeah, just just missed. You you can't always win. No, and you were there on um, on Saturday at Cup Day, mate. How was it? Yeah, mate. Yeah, no, I took the kids down there for a few hours. It was uh, it was very busy. There was a lot on. Um, it's a very different scene when you go and take your kids to go and jump on the bouncy castles and <laughs> play around with the you know, the soccer balls and whatever that was out the back. And um, when you when you're very sober and you sort of see the. Uh, yeah, the crowd enjoying themselves down there. It's a, yeah, it's a very different environment. But no, it was it was great. Beautiful day. Weather was beautiful. Racing was awesome. Um, love the Big E. Yeah, yeah, it is so good. It's like we talked about on the pod last week. We won't harp on about it again because everybody's got the message. It's the place to be. Um, but I did see some of those activities and stuff when I walked in for the derby and went into the winning post and thought, shit, that's a good family day out as well with the bouncy classes and the bands and stuff. So I'm glad that you got a piece of that. That's cool. Yeah, cheers, mate. Good on you, mate. Uh, righto, let's get into some of the events that are coming up because like we said and like we have talked about, gee whiz, it's all happening um, in TAB racing BGP world. We've got plenty coming up in April, which we're very excited about. We're having a crack. We want to keep... The good times going as they have this season. Um, and I think the thing, we'll just go in timeline because live, uh, April 6th, the Championships Day uh, in Australia, we're going to be live streaming with the ACC, not in the Beer Garden Studio, but actually down at Ellerslie, the winning post, in conjunction with the TAB and Auckland Thoroughbred Racing Club, of course. It's a huge day's racing. How yeah, good. Yeah, absolutely. So we were sort of lining this up to just do a lock-in and live stream here from the studio and just a bit of a punt along and enjoy the day and drink some beers and have a good time. Um, we went to the Winning Post bar the other day and um, was thinking, how good would it be to just sit in front of these screens and just have a few cold export golds and um, punt your face off through the day with a bunch of people just coming and jumping on the live stream? I thought, how good. Mm. Uh, the TAB said, yes, please, let's have a little bit of that. Um, so there's still a few details to be ironed out. Um but I think we're going sort of for maybe like a burger and beer strategy where people who maybe can't make it down to Ellerslie, because there are races on down at Ellerslie that day. Pookie. Ah, oh, Ellerslie, sorry, at Pookie that day. Um, but, yeah, people can come along, get involved, have a few beers, have a burger, uh, jump on the live stream, have a bit of a chat, and just, you know, have a real good day in punting. Yeah, absolutely. Love that, eh? I mean, that's what the winning post is sort of going to be all about, just p- punters wanting to get in there, have about 15 screens in front of them so they can punt all day, have a chat about about betting as well. It's going to be a great place to be, um, and I hope we're going to be streaming from that little circular couch that was just in front of the TV. Did you see that on the day? Did you notice that? Yeah, I Look, did. It looked really comfortable. It looked pretty stuff. close. Adam, if we can sort that out for the podcast, just sitting on there. <laughs> right, maybe a little bit. Maybe we have to move it back a little that's, bit. That's fine. We can sort that out, eh? need to see all the screens. I want to be punting at Wollongong. <laughs> Wollongong right. dogs or the something. Wollongong, Wollongong dogs, eh? It'll be good to have people with us there as well. Like Dan says, it is gonna, there is going to be access. We'll let you know. Uh, at some point, but we want to make a bit of a day of it and have have a good time because 
honestly, if you aren't aware already, the races coming out of Ramwick that day are just sensational. This, the, Don, the Doncaster Mile, the TJ Smith Stakes, by all accounts, is going to have Imperatriz versus I Wish I Win, Private Eye, Cylinder, Think About It, who won the Everest last year. I Wish I Win and Imperatriz. We can't wait to see that clash because they've not raced since they were both in New Zealand, have they? So... That's a great race. The Australian Derby Orchestral Ascend the Throne, what you wish for. Not sure if the second two are going to that, but they're in the market, so they may well be. It's a hell of a race day. There's some out of New Zealand too. Yeah, it's an absolute belter of a day. Um, I think we've got uh, the races done in Trenton that day, do we? You said one or two size produce stakes. Yeah. Is that right? I think so, yeah. yeah. And, a, um, and a bit more So we've got too. a group one, and then we've got another sort of four group or listed races on that day as well. Yeah, um, and then I think we also have races maybe down Rickerton? somewhere else, maybe Rickerton, Rickerton? or yeah. something on that day. <laughs> oh no, Trentham and Puk. Oh no, that's the six. Yeah, Trentham and Pukekohe. Yeah, because they're racing at Pukki. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is going to be a good day. April six. Just keep your eyes out. We'll let everybody know shortly what's going to be happening in terms of getting to the winning posts at Ellerslie that day. But if you can't make it there and you can't make it to Pukki or the races anywhere else, we'll be live streaming as well with the ACC. So should be one hell of a day. Uh, for everybody involved. Also, I think it's the weekend after. I've got gout this week, Dan, and I need to get on top of it because if I go to all of these things, this gout is going to continue happening. So uh, the week after um, the a- April the 6th Championship Days, we're going to race by Grins, which we've already sold a lot of tickets to. And we've got a punters club. Yeah, mate, we do. We have a punters club, the first ever BGP punters club for exclusively harness. Um, really looking forward to the community getting behind it. Um, really uh, pleased to see that we've already got 12K in the tin, uh, ready to rock and roll so the lads can uh, unload on anything that they like. We really want to try and ramp this up. I'd love to see sort of two to 250K uh, for the first ever Harness uh, Punters Club. That would be great. Um, ticket sales are going really well. Um, so for everyone that's out there, we have a limited capacity um, so at Cambridge, it's not the, the biggest event, so we don't have hundreds of tickets that we can sell. Um, I think we're down to about 15 of the early bird tickets left, and once they're gone, we're going to put the price up, but there's only going to be another 50 tickets. Mm. Uh, and then once they're gone, they're gone. Like That's it. it the, the place is going to be completely sold out. Um, there's no extra room. There's no way to get into the BGP room. Um, so quickly, the $115 at the moment uh, gets you four free drinks, um, so they're going to be supported by Export Gold, Grins, and a few of the other, um, maybe the club and a few other people. Uh, we've got a meal, so we're doing like a full-on carvery meal. Plus, uh, near the end of the night, they're going to provide some like sort of booze soakers, so they're going to bring out like little pies and savouries and whatever just to sort of keep keep a lid on it because, uh, let, let me tell you, uh, if we start backing a few winners early, mm. I think we might be getting a little bit loose, so... They might need the pot pies just to cool it down a little bit. And then, can, can we request a cheese platter? Just that. Oh, I can, I can throw. I can, <laughs> sure, I can throw an email. I love a cheese platter. <laughs> um, and then obviously we have got the after party afterwards as well. We've got Cotier, who's playing as the live band. Um, but Cambridge have a restriction on how la- uh, late they're allowed to be open because it's like in a residential neighbourhood. So after that, you can pay thirty dollars and you can get returned bus tickets from Hamilton um, to the races and then back to Hamilton where House on Hood, they're having the official after party of the race by Grins, uh, and it's going to be absolutely loose. Can you imagine a whole bunch of people in a punters club of $250,000? That punters club gets to a million dollars. Those people in the room are all part of it, and they're in a bus to Hamilton, ready to get stuck in. That's I mean, it be, could be carnage. It could be a great, great night. Yeah. I mean, the Kanaka Millions is awesome, and everyone has a great time getting down to that party. It could be... You know, that, up there with that. The house on hood could be going from the hood to Beverly Hills. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> the cash that's getting made. Oh, uh, wow. It should be a great day. Like Dan says, honestly, if you haven't seen those tickets, there's not too many of those early birds available. It is a great night. I remember watching it on TV last year, and it looked like everyone was having such a good time, and BGP weren't even – we didn't even have an event that night. So add BGP into the mix. I'm sure it'll be louder and even better. And the lads punt well, so you want to get in the punters club. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think um, when I was having a look back at the bets that they'd done on NZ Cup Week, in total they bet 200K, and so that was turnover as well. So that's uh, just the amount of bets that they had. But they actually made $449,000, the Harness Lads. Uh, so we got Fitzy and Matty Markham coming in 
to run the punters club for us. Mm. Um, and they're very uh, two very astute tipsters that uh, have the inside word and the knowledge, and I'm sure they'll be watching all the horses do their track work and uh, trials and trying to uh, figure out and find some value. I don't know if you remember on Cup Week, they had a $12,000 each way bet on a horse called Cyrus. Um and I remember. <laughs> then he came home and returned two hundred forty-six thousand dollars. Yeah, that, I mean that, the scenes. Do you reckon Luke will have a crack? I know he won't, but like, surely we're going to give Luke a crack at a harness bet. See how uh, he goes. Well, I think maybe we'll just let him have a crack at his own account. I'm sure he he, he won't no, want to be involved. He'll be he'll be unloading. Yeah, no, I think he's actually looking forward to not uh, not being a part of the decisions and the punting and yep. doing all of that. And just actually. So, you know, having a good time. Having a good time. He might actually have more time in the night to actually chat to people that come up and, you know, it's, yeah. good, it's good for Luke to enjoy it. because well, he, he, he knows how to have a good time. He does know how to have a good time. So if you're on the bus with him back to the house on hood after BGP of <laughs> a million dollars, you'll be in a Watch good spot. So I reckon yeah. hey, he'll be in a good spot. And even better, and that's April 12th on April 13th. Well, not even better, but it would be even better if you join the Warriors uh, night as well, which is straight after the night after April 13th against the Sea Eagles. We have sent out on the app and uh, on the Instagram, I believe, um, and we sent an email to those who came along last year, but the Warriors tickets to the Stacey Jones Lounge <coughs> are live April 13th, 6 p.m. kickoff against the Sea Eagles. Unfortunately, the Warriors couldn't get us too amped on Friday night. That was a bit um, difficult to watch, but I'm sure, they'll, uh, I'm sure they'll turn it around. I know corporate hospitality that night is sold out as well, so basically BGP have got the only corporate tickets in the house left, so you might as well get involved. Absolutely, 100%. Um, look, I, I think we showed enough uh, the other night that we've got um, we've got what it takes to to take this thing out. I know mm. it's game one. Um, it was quite disappointing to watch in the second half of that game, but um, I, I did, like, even though our, maybe our structure wasn't there and we weren't um, really proficient, I, I you can't take away from the ticker. Like, they all wanted it, and mm. they, they were all aggressively trying to chase it, and it just didn't work out, and that's... That's fine. If you've got a team that tries and, and puts in the effort. Um, totally what, agree. What more can you ask for? The first 20 minutes, we absolutely rolled all over them. So the signs are good. Those tickets for that night, they're 150 bucks. You get a feed, you get two beers, uh, and access to the Stacey Jones Lounge as well, which is the best seat in the house. You've already heard us talk about it, but last year we had such a great time. Most people didn't even go down to their seats as well because the lounge is such a good view. People just stayed up. Hunting, trackside will be on the TV. We'll get an old boy in. Last year, we had Mark Tukey, who couldn't start a speech on time because he was watching a race on telly. He's, oh, fuck, sorry, lads. Hold on. I'm going to be cut on. So we'll get somebody like that. The Warriors love a punt. But, uh, yeah, the Stacey Jones Lounge is a good spot. Yeah, mate, it's so good, eh? So I actually went down for the first half and sat in my seat and watched the game. And then when I came back up, I was thinking, what am, what am I doing? It's a little bit chilly out there. Like, I, just, I had to sit in this beautiful seat and... Have a couple of cold beers and look out that you know big glass window. There's access just... to a bar that no one else has got access to, and trackside's on, and 100%. you can see the Warriors and the Warriors are on the screen. It's just fantastic. It is yeah. a good night. Absolutely. I tell you what, old uh, Adam Bat thinks it was a good idea. <laughs> yeah. He's got to put his hand up and said, "I'll take twenty five of them." Because that that's that's uh, what's that? That's not twenty five percent of the tickets. It's twelve and a half percent of the tickets available. Yeah, he swept them up. Gone. <laughs> What a so get in quick, because they'll be gone. He's already bought two rows, Adam Back. Good on you, mate. We'll look forward to seeing you and your crew there on that uh, that Saturday night. You can find the tickets on the app, uh, on the BGP app, of course, or on the Instagram page. Um, hopefully, yeah, you can you can access them nice and easily. Looking forward to seeing everybody streaming in that night. That's one hell of a weekend, April 12th, the Trots, April 13th, the Warriors. Gee whiz, I'm sure there's maybe a little bit more to come yeah, as well. Yeah, Monday off work. Uh, Monday off work, yeah. <laughs> maybe Tuesday as well, mate. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Should be good. Righto, last weekend, um, geez, the uh, best bets scenario probably wasn't quite as good as um, some of the weekends we've had, but Ted did get us off to a bloody good start with Pearl of Alsace um, on Saturday, which was which was good. But I think that might have been just about the only one that we got home. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, there wasn't. Yeah, so that uh, Fitzy's uh, every street placed and then um, backed up on Sunday. Actually, almost won on Sunday. Did it run a it run place second, on I think. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I, um, I, I actually messaged it. Well, you might have seen it in the group chat. I said, <laughs> yeah, you Is asked. this worth a bet? <laughs> yeah. This fucking sicko just still punting on a Sunday <laughs> afternoon, um, trying, to tr- trying to chase the, uh, chase the adrenaline rush. Um, and I said, is it a good bet? And he goes, oh, it's definitely a good top three, top four bet. And me, uh, I just go lump it on the nose and go each yeah. way. Um, I did actually make my money back, which was good. But, um, yeah, it looked like it was going to win at one stage. So, yeah, good good punting. Good punting. Not, good. 
No, it was ten dollars shot as well. So, oh, absolutely, it was a good tip out from Fitzy. I think he was really confident on the top four, which it ran um, on that Friday, and then obviously again on the Sunday. Pearl of our Sace was really good going to the New Zealand Thoroughbred Breeders, which if you hadn't heard, apparently Tayaraha is not quite ready. I know Ted's on the board there, so he can probably uh, let us know some information if he's in the comments. But it's going to be raced at Ellerslie this season on Easter. <laughs> We're away, which I'm really disappointed about. I didn't know, um, but that's pretty cool that the race is. You know, coming to Ellerslie, because that's a big race. Yeah, as soon as I heard that, I thought, oh, perfect. <laughs> like, I'll be at Ellerslie. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, realised that it's actually on Easter weekend, and I won't be. I'll be I'll be out in the boat trying to catch some fish. Yeah, I wish most people will be on Easter, but I'm sure they'll be watching that race. Um, my best bet, Marengo, just loves second, unfortunately. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I thought this is one of it. It just got smoked at the end. Uh, the blessed bet, cursed again, but we do have a blessed bet coming this week. Uh so we will get to that very, very shortly. Make sure you keep your comments coming in about your best bets as well. We've got $100 to give away. Hopefully they're streaming through. We'll get to them at some point soon. Mate, you were at Ellerslie on Saturday, and uh, I don't know where you were standing for the system of stakes with Velocious, but, geez, with about 200 metres to go, did you think, shit, she's gone a bit early here? Yeah, funny enough, I um, I just got to Ellerslie when the system started, and I was sort of had both the kids in, in, in both my arms trying to carry them up the stairs to get into the stands to watch it. So I actually only watched the race from about the 200 onwards. Right. Um, and I thought, oh, God, she's going real good. Um, and then when they sort of went past me, I thought, oh, well, Capture by Love might be making a bit of ground. But it's a little bit funny where I was sitting in the stands because um, it's a bit deceptive. But, like, when I went back and watched it on video, she she won easy. Went a little bit early. Marshy was sort of, but they they had to. That's what mm-hmm. he said. But it was still far too good. Yeah, it was far, far too, good. too good and won't get beaten by those. That's a really good horse. Velocious has had a serious two-year-old campaign, eh? And that's just come off a break as well. Mm. From the um, Karaka Millions, eh? Yeah. I, I'd love to see this horse in Australia as a two-year-old. Yeah. Well, it must be going to the Manawatu or two size now. I mean, why would you not? It's probably good money. Well, the men are with two sires as well. So if you win that race and then you go on and win the tab Kiwi, you're eligible for that big bonus. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's so right. yeah. Um, that, that was Marshy was saying on the um, way in on, on Monday. The way yeah, in, yeah, 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 saying like you sort of almost, like he said, well, what we would normally do is maybe tip it out and then focus on maybe the um, 2,000 guineas. Mm. Um, but he said, well, now what we might do is we might just go for the men are with two size projects because you, you then are eligible. If you win that, you are eligible for the for the bonus for the, bonus, for the tab yeah. Kiwi and then tip it out and sort of try and focus on the Karaka Millions into the yeah. into the Kiwi. The tab Kiwi is 1,600, eh? Yeah, uh, 1,500, I think. 1,500, is it? Yeah. Like you said a few weeks ago when we were talking about the futures market, I, I, unless something comes out of the woodwork next season, which it will as a three-year-old, I, this horse is too good for them all at the moment. Well, uh, by this time, orchestral hadn't started as a two-year-old. True, yeah. Um, and, and look who's the best three-year-old now. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, that's good. And Orchestral so does, kicked off in the winter, I think, eh, behind yeah. Molly Bloom. And do you and remember yeah. a horse called Novia? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I think that was having its third start when it's won the 2000, or maybe <sighs> something was, like that. That, was but that, that. that didn't. I don't know if it raced, it might have raced once as a two-year-old or whatever, but like, there's always these ones that pop out of nowhere, and you go, Wow, where'd that one come from? Yeah. Um, sometimes just horses develop at different times and yeah. uh, they just come out of nowhere. So Velocious is a very good horse, um, but I, I can't – I'm just trying to think of the horses that were like brilliant two-year-olds that then were brilliant three-year-olds. Um, and it doesn't necessarily always happen because Tokyo Tycoon was a brilliant two-year-old, right? Won the Karaka Millions and was yeah, crushing it, was. it and then sort of come out as a three-year-old and wasn't um, – Spectacular, dynastic the year before that. Maybe not a brilliant horse, but yeah, that's not that didn't really come out well as a three year old. So maybe yeah. the probably was probably a you know an outside freak show though. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah exactly. just different, And maybe Velocious is. Yeah, hopefully because um, yeah, it's really cool to see. It's and the thing I love about it as well is Sam Spratt back on as well. You know, she's she's had a uh, probably a quiet few years, but she's racing so well. Um, and I know one of the lads has got a best bet later on with uh, riding on her. Hopes as well. Uh, and Stephen Marsh too, that combo. So, yeah, we'll get to that at some point. Archaic Smile, I think, was quite good second there as well. Mate, we've got to talk about this bone crusher quickly because Alvinsador won it. I'm not even sure that we mentioned Alvinsador last week. Legato got Desert Lightning. Oh, yeah, again. Um, Thoughts? And at 2,000 metres as well. 
Um, I just, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if she maybe ran a little bit, raced a little bit dour, and maybe is she's looking for a little bit more difference. And um, but I do remember like she had that brilliant, brilliant turn of foot. Uh, do you remember when she won the Australian Guineas over sixteen hundred and that like Flemington brilliance today, that yeah. she had? Yeah, amazing. like powerful run. Um, I'm not saying that she doesn't have that anymore, but she hit a bit of a flat spot on the corner and just sort of really struggled to to make ground and. Maybe it's a bit of a mix of like it's very tempo related at Alizy because if the tempo's not there, then it makes it very hard for horses to make ground if there's a good horse in front. Um, but yeah, it was a um, dollar forty-five. Eh? That was that. That is probably mm. tough to watch for a lot of people. But Alvincador, honestly, I, I again really happy. Stephen Marsh, well done. He got a massive double on the weekend. Good on you, Marsh. He's a big follower of BGP community, so people will be absolutely pumped about that. Hopefully he bought himself and his team some beers. Alvincador is a, is a horse that we've probably followed for a long time. I remember BGP had a punt on it uh, at the New Zealand Cup Carnival last year, but up at Tauranga where it got scratched. Ted's had it as his best bet. We've had a crack at it this season as well. But I just didn't think that 2,000 metres against those horses, it would do it. And it was fucking did it easy. Apparently it was, yeah. <laughs> I was um, I was actually pretty happy. Ladies' Man running top three because oh, I had yeah. that in my multi. That was good. Um, ladies was like man's $2.50 or $3 maybe at top three. That distance, Ladies' Man's just yeah. killing it. Hey, I think three runs now and it's running the top three. So it's a good bet moving forward. Yeah, loves it. It was still quite a way off those first two. But um, yeah, good horse. Yeah, absolutely. How do we go on the Auckland Cup, mate? <laughs> Gee whiz! I don't, I don't have the winner. Let I me just, tell you that for sure. I don't think, I don't, like Marajan, what? <laughs> and then Sam Weatherly got yeah. off and was like, "This is the best stayer in the country." I said, where, where, why didn't we hear that before the race? Yeah, the only thing that um, the only good time that I had on the New Zealand, uh, the Auckland Cup, was that Fierce Flight and Asterix uh, were equal top four because I had yeah, Fierce Flight yeah, top yeah. four in my multi, so that was Ladies Man into that. Um, so that made me pretty happy that I had Fierce Flight uh, top four. Um, yeah, gee whiz, I had a had a few different bets in this race and, and none of them came off. <laughs> so hard, eh, these but cup But Maharajan, races. like, it's it's funny, eh, because when you go, it's it's always the way, and it's the same with all the punting. When you go back and have a look, you go, why did I not have a bet on that race? Like, it was so good in the New Zealand Cup. I, I, I think, uh, I don't know if I'm like everybody else. It won the New Zealand Cup, obviously, but I, uh, yeah. I look at horses that I know, that I know, because the field's so big, and I'm, I'm half arsing it, really. So I look at horses that I know, and I'm like, yeah, I'll have a look at that, and then I go, Marajan, oh, I don't really know. Oh, won the New Zealand Cup. Oh, no, I won't do that. <laughs> you just got to pass by it. But then it goes and wins at really, really good odds. Mark Twain was really, really good in the finish. I think that's a stayer for the future for sure. It's had such a good campaign. Not sure where it's going now. But at one point, with 200 metres to go, I thought, shit, this thing's going to mow it down and win. Chances that one might be going to Australia. Four? Um, maybe the Sydney Cup. It's good enough. Penny Wicker won that last year, eh? No, she won the Victorian Victor- Oaks. Who won the Oh, no, the Australian Oaks. Oh, yeah. Who won the Sydney Cup? Not a Kiwi then. No, uh-huh. no I don't think so. Can't Mark Twain's remember. good. Keep them going. Rob Wellwood, uh, Roger James, keep it rolling. Finally, before we get on to this weekend, keep your best bets coming in. I'm sure people had a punt on Imperatriz. I did. Couldn't quite lug the weight, Dan. What do you reckon? Who's that? Imperatriz. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that was that was probably it. Maybe a little bit to do with the sort of best part of the track, and <clears throat> I'm not sure. I'm not sure if she's the best, like out in the open, bowling along, sort of leading the pack. Like I think she is maybe better um, with a bit of cover and then able to unleash her lethal sprint. But it's 58 kilos versus 51 and a half or something like yeah, that. Like that. It's a huge amount of weight difference. Yeah, yeah. You can For imagine fast horses, carrying eh? like a, you know, one and a half of those five kilo weights, putting that on your back versus someone that doesn't have one. Like, mm. It's gonna, it's going to be harder. Yeah. You could see at the 300 meters where Opie was asking the question, you're going, oh... Yeah. So to run second was pretty good. Yeah, it was very impressive. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't think it takes anything away from her. No. I think um, you put that field in wait for age conditions. Um, maybe, is, is that a three-year-old cylinder? So maybe not wait yeah. for age, but like you put them in equal weights or something like that. I think she just blows them off the park. But um, yeah, it is what it is. Agree. They'll continue on with Imperatures. Sounds like the Valley and uh, people will keep punting on it. Such a great horse. Tayako, I've got it in such good nick. TJ Smith, April 6th, where we'll be live streaming and hopefully hosting some of you guys down at the Willing Post at Ellerslie. We'll see that. Imperatures, 
I wish I win. Private Eye, Cylinder. Think about it. Shit, that's a good race. How good? Mercurial, maybe? Who knows? Mercu- what? <laughs> we'll get to that. We will get to that. Righto, let's crack on. This week, the blessed bet, Dan. Uh, this is one of our favorites, isn't it? It is. Um, we've gone early, and we're saying, get the money. Oh, gee whiz, it's taking some money. No way. What? Uh, Did you get a bet on? Uh, well, I've got that multi on, um, but that's all I've got. And um, I do have... Oh, wow, yeah. Okay, um, well, what's our uh, blessed bet, mate? <laughs> the blessed bet's right. <laughs> race... Oh, sorry, I was... The breath was uh, taken away. Uh, Trenton meeting for race one, the BGP blessed bet number one, Altari. Uh, you might remember if you follow the IG story, uh, Matt, Daddy, and me were at the um, at the slot auction for the tab Kiwi. We were uh, having to have a few beers to build up the courage and get around and talk to some people, but we ended up speaking to Reese uh, from Tiakel, and um, he stared us into Altari. And it set three wide and, and won really impressively first up. So we thought, this looks like a horse that's got a bit of ability. We've got the one and only Opie Bossum on board. Drawn three. $2.20 now out to $2.50. What? Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> I think it was three. Is that this the is three hours ago this became the blessed bear. Yeah. So it's into into two twenty. That's a stitch up. Absolute stitch up. Yeah. So... Uh, Boosted to two fifty, so you can still get the two fifty. Um, so I guess just get on, get paid early, get and then you can dive into some of the boys' BGP uh, best bets after. Gee whiz, that is an absolute stitch up. Three dollars into two fifty is a boosted bet. Don't forget, you don't get your money back for that one if it runs top four as well. So uh, yeah, if you're investing into that, we really need it to win. But yeah, like you say, Tayako have been very keen on it. If you just go back and look at its run, it was three wide and it still smashed them. Um, Hazy actually talked us into it before we asked Reese. So uh, cheers, Hazy. Good on you, brother. That was good from him, eh? Yeah, it was good. Good chat. What a legend. Looks well, I think like he a called it an absolute bull. He called it an absolute bull. He was fired up about it. And then he talked about how he's going to uh, Greymouth for a stag do. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a change of topic. I love it. <laughs> good on you, Hazy, mate. We'll see you next time. Um, we'll keep punting on our Tari. Righto, let's get <laughs> stuck in. Keep your best bets coming in. We're going to run through four races very, very uh, quickly, hopefully find you guys some winners as well. We've got some best bets. Like we said, um, there's some good ones tonight, actually. The Goat found one for the team at $13 for a win. So, uh, yeah, he's liking one down at Trentham. And then there's a bit of value from some of the others as well. So stick with us. We will get there. But firstly, race five at Trentham is the Lightning Stakes. Uh, it's a listed race. And like we've already talked about, Mercurial uh, comes into this. I'm not sure at quite as favourite. No, it's not favourite, but paying $4.50, coming off the back of um, winning the Telegraph and then a pretty good third as well. Having a seriously good campaign. Sam Spratt and Stephen Marsh are informed, but are you on it, Dan? Uh, will we? Um, yeah, I really like Mercurial. Dr- good draw. I think it might be able to jump out in front, bowl along, and get away on him here. There's a couple that are uh, quite interesting runners. There's this horse here, uh, Fresh Up, We Will Rock. Mm. Uh, seven bucks into five fifty, so it's taking a little bit of money. Obviously, there's a little bit of support for that one there as well. And then look a little bit further down the page, you got Patrice, um, which I thought was pretty good um, last start without maybe necessarily being outstanding. I don't know if that was tempo related, um, but also came out of a good race, Maria Farina, and obviously you know the great horse Dragon Leap, <laughs> who loves to run a second. Uh, I won't go too much further into that, but yeah. Uh, Mercurial run third in that race as well, and Petrucci run fourth. So, bit of form around it. Carrying fifty three. Um, so that's that's uh, that's a that's maybe a little bit of an interesting one there as well because I'm just having a look when it run fourth, it carried fifty three as well, um, and I think Mercurial might have been around the fifty eight. So maybe a one kilo difference. Mercurial gets an extra kilo. But I'll probably be playing this race maybe around, um, sort of around those three. I'm Wonderful Tonight as well as another one. You know, there's probably quite a few in here, but I think what I'll probably do is just have a bit on Mercurial and uh, sit back and enjoy this one. Nice, mate. Mercurial won the, the Telegraph. Same conditions, only a half a kilo uh, heavier in this race. 1,200 metres down the chute at Trentham over, on a good track. Uh, that day, got its own way, got the pace, went to the front. Um, Sam Spratt dictated the pace of the race and just got the job done. So 
the same thing happens, it'll be very hard to see it beaten, I would have thought. But there are some good horses in there. I reckon I'm wonderful tonight. Last start had a breathing issue, um, and the start before that was third in the Concord at Ellerslie, carrying 57 kgs, this time down to 53 kgs, which is a hell of, hell of a lot of weight off the back of it. Was beaten by Petrucci that day, but again carried 4 kgs more than it. And Master Faye beat him that bet that day as well. I think the Punters Club had a bet on I'm Wonderful Tonight in that race yeah. as well. So I'd stick with uh, I'm sticking with I'm Wonderful Tonight. Um, I just think that weight, if it gets a good run, should be bloody good. But uh, yeah, that's a pretty cool race, eh? Pretty quick. I, I love Petrucci too. Trentham's so difficult, mate. And I should have said this before we started. Like I I know at the top of the show I said we've done not very well, and I'm sorry if that caused you offence. But like I haven't done very well. Have you done very well at Trentham? Oh God, no, no, no. Um, I'll keep my opinions to myself, but yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just find that there's always these $20 shots that come from Central Districts that come and win it. And that's, I, I just don't watch Central Districts racing enough or follow it enough to spot them. But if you do, you can win some money. Yeah, I think I'll just be messaging the goat all day. Yeah, well, the goat knows, <laughs> mate, exactly, yeah. Give me the word, mate. That's exactly give right. Me the, give me the $20 shot that's going to win this one. That's right. That is exactly right. So sometimes favourites in that $3.80, uh, I'm wonderful tonight favourite, and even Mercurial, I'm not that uh, confident on. I'm not confident on anything tonight, but uh, <laughs> let's keep rolling through them. Uh, the Cuddle Stakes, race six. I think we both like the same horse here that we were talking about before, but... Uh, Gee whiz, mate, I see Farrelly only's coming from 380 to 350, but there has been a couple of scratchings in this. Um, and at the top of the book, Belle Claire's 550 favourite. This is a pretty good race and looks pretty even, mate. Yeah, it looks like a great race. I think um, Belle Claire's a good bet each way, 550 and $2.10. I think um, she was outstanding at Ellerslie. Um, I don't know about last start. Otaki, um, I think we can give her a forgive. Like, anything that's not a good three or good four, just write it off. Just yeah. don't worry about it. Um, and just act like it never existed. If she gets back on a good track here, I think drawn six, five fifty and two dollars ten is a good bet. There's a couple others that you look a little bit further down the page. Now, obviously, you know, you've got your obvious ones, like your Contribute and your Farah Leone. Um, but I quite like uh, Robbie Patterson at the moment. Um, now, look, Craig Grills is in Australia, so that's why maybe he's not riding this one, the hottie. Mm. But $11 and $3.50, I don't know what it's paying top four, but it maybe is $11 and $2.40. And that's maybe a, uh, some good value that I think is maybe worth having a look at, carrying 55 kilos. Mm. But the other one is actually a little bit further down the book, there's no rain ever. Um, mm. A three-year-old filly that's been racing against some pretty good horses, and $9 and $2.20 top four. I think I'll probably try and have a look maybe at like Belle Claire with no rain ever top four or um, or even the hottie top four. Maybe something around there. Maybe have a look at the power plays and see if there's something um, something there for you. I think actually if I had a look down, um, yeah, no, I'd, I'd have to go back and have a look in, um, in, in, the, in those bets, but. There's a lot of power play options there, eh? There's a lot of power play. Interest. I saw no rain ever as well and thought, geez, they must be pretty confident. Warren Kennedy's on as well at 53 kilos. Like, yeah. oh, man, at $9, you find it hard not to have a crack at that. Like we talked about, the hottie, you've mentioned um, Robbie Patterson was on fire on Wellington Cup Day. Won the Wellington Cup, didn't he? And then um, another race that day too. He's a central um, district trainer that, you know, generally win races here at uh, Trentham. So... Why would you not have a look at the value of that? Um, contribute last start was really, really unlucky. I think Ted's best bet was um, Contribute in that run, and it bloody got stood on about 14 times in the first 200 metres and then couldn't get a run. But I see it's dropping back in distance quite a lot. So uh, I think it's dropping back in distance quite a lot. That was, yeah, 2,000 metres back, 1,600 metres. So I'm not sure about the $5.50. <laughs> I'm with you on Belclair, but we were talking before the podcast. Man, every time I bet on Belclair, it goes nowhere, and every time I don't bet on it, it wins. So... I'm going to have a bet on it this week, and I'm, I reckon it's going to win. Just bet on it every time. <laughs> I reckon you'd lose, eh? <clears throat> 5.50 and 2.10, that sounds like a good bet to me. Sam Spratt, again, is in great form. Um, and, yeah, like you say, hopefully a rock-hard track at Trentham <clears throat> for it on Saturday. Right, the Wellington Guineas. Keep your comments coming in, people. Let us know what you think about the punts on those races as well. Uh, we will get to the comments very shortly. A couple more races. But, uh, yeah, Wellington Guineas, Group 2, Race 7, 4.03.
PM, um, and I'm not even sure who was the favourite. Oh, I know the favourite is, of course, it's Irish Legacy, isn't it, Dan? It is, and I love this horse. Um, it's been boosted by the tab as well, out to 3.6. Um, it's quite a big field, eh? There's a lot of horses going around here, um, and I was trying to find a little bit of value that maybe people could sink their teeth into a little bit here, um, and I did find in the power plays um, it was... Irish Legacy to win, and Wits End top four. Now, Wits End's got a terrible draw out wide, but looks impressive. Um, and so the Irish Legacy to win, Wits End top four, $10. But the other one that I think I would probably have a play on as well, so I'll do a sort of two-bet two bet play here, Irish Legacy to win and Grail Seeker top four. Grail Seeker? Yeah, Grail Seeker. So stepping back from being over ground, maybe had a little bit of a break coming back. I think... Um, it stepped up to ground. I don't think it was for it. Um, Interesting. Yeah, so I think going back to the Wellington Guineas over 1,400 metres, I think um, and you know, even that is just the straight up top three bet, $3 is pretty good. But you get the um, Irish Legacy was outstanding last start. It was brilliant in its first start. I think that horse is just going to put them in a body bag. Mm. Um, but we have Irish Legacy and then maybe a Grail Seeker top four. I think you get 10 bucks for that. I'll have a bit of that. Irish Legacy might be one of the lads' best bets uh, later on as well. Um, we were actually looking to bless it, but it's already boosted by the TAB, so don't miss out on that. That's out. Tab didn't want to bless a booster. No, no, they don't double boost it. But, uh, yeah, Irish Legacy last start uh, was quite unlucky. Um, Ted actually came up. That was on Derby Day, wasn't it? He was fired up at the end of the race meeting. He was... Uh, Devastated that Irish Legacy didn't get the job done, but he did say this is a good horse, honestly. This is a good horse. So, uh, yeah, Irish Legacy um, is very, very hard not to bat on, bet on with that kind of feedback. But, um, mate, there are some other good horses in there. Like, mow it down in that race as well. Um, race three wide the trip. Yeah, and it, and it, second. it was an outstanding run. It was an outstanding run. And, um, yeah, okay, Irish Legacy probably would have beaten it had it got a run. But I've spotted a little – you said Irish Legacy, what's in top four, which I also think is a really good bet because what's in was a bit – got a bit laid out at Topo. But um, Irish Legacy and Mow It Down top four, 440, both to run top four. There's also Irish Legacy and what's in both to run top four at 440 as well. Oof. That seems like pretty good money, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. 440. Absolutely, yeah. 440 is a lot, yeah. I mean, it's quite a big field, and there's, there's actually quite a bit of form in here, so it's a really good race. But both of those seem like – you could back both of them. You could put a hundred bucks on both of them, and surely one of them would come in. You'd hope so, eh? The only concern I've got about Irish Legacy is Barrier Twelve. Is that an issue? No, no. Okay. No, I think um, the big roomy track. I think it, it doesn't matter. I, I think if this horse, oh, I don't want to Ryan Elliott it. Um, I don't want him to Ryan Elliott it either. Yeah. Um, but I think if it just gets one out on the rail, maybe gets four or five, five horses back on the outside and gets maybe a little bit of a cart into it, I think this horse will just boom down the outside and just put them put them away. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. Uh, the one horse I'm a little bit wary of, and the jockey as well, Jonathan Riddell, Lantern Way. This won the Hawks Bay Guineas um, at, uh, at over 1,400 as well. Uh, and then it went down south and ran fifth in the Guineas and ran third, I think, um, in a quite a good race at Ashburton. Cash this food. horse is fresh up, and honestly, Lisa Ladder knows how to train. She wins at Trentham. Jonathan Riddell knows how to ride. He wins at Trentham. Could just be one of those ones that down at Trentham, if you're looking for something not within the favourites, um, it could just pull their pants down a little bit. Quite fresh up. Um, had a pretty decent trial, so I think I'll be having a bet on that as well. Yeah. Lantern Way, $11. Yeah, it was really good. Threw that carnival down a record, and it was really good. Yeah, yeah, just couldn't quite get the job done. I mean, I think it was one of the favourites. But did it win like its first start or something like that? And second, its first start, and then won the Hawks Bay Guineas earlier yeah. in the season. And they've had a break since um, since Rickerton as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I don't know, eleven dollars. Just if you're looking for Smokies at Trentham, which normally could have run in. fifth in the Guineas. Yeah, yep. yeah, right. Good horse. You like it? I do. Yeah, because I remember now, like as well. Yeah, that start before at Rickerton, um, Burn to Shine one and Truby End run second. Um, yeah. Now it just it's been off the scene, obviously. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. been so much racing. Yeah, you forget between it, okay. Cup Week and now. Well, we 
Did I go to Cup Week? You did. <laughs> right, okay. You probably it lost money like on it, Lantern Way, mate. It seems like it was so far away. It was such a long time. Uh, right, okay, cool. Okay, well, that s- happened. Sounds like we should Good. have a bet on Lantern Way. Yeah, maybe. I think so. All right, let's get to the Oaks. Stick with us. We are uh, getting through it very quickly. We've still got Australia to come, but after the Oaks, we're going to get your best bets and your comments that are coming through. Thank you very much to everybody that's been contributing so far. Feel free to tell us that we're wrong. Um, because you're probably as likely to be right as we are. So feel free to get in the comments. Let us know what you think are your best bets. Right, mate, the New Zealand Oaks, this is a race that we've been building towards for so long this season, um, and I feel the lads have their crack at the derby a couple of weeks ago. I've come to the Oaks, and I feel slightly disappointed that I don't see so many horses that we've been following throughout the season. I also feel slightly disappointed that that race meeting at Topo last Friday is maybe a little bit too close to this race. But I still think it's going to be a great race because um, it always is, and it's the New Zealand Oaks, so they're always going to—they're all going to be there to win it. Yeah, I look at this race and I think Kelly Alfarasha. Oh, me God. too. How much money did I lose on it last week? Oh, no, I don't think that's <laughs> not to win. win. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, mate, I absolutely whacked it last week. Oh, and uh, was it last week or the week before? It was Derby Day? Derby Day was two weeks ago. Gee whiz! Uh, ye got hurt. Um, but yeah, then horses like Chantilly Lace uh, go to, well, they have to go away. It was at Hawke's Bay, and then it got cancelled, then they had to go to Taupo. Yeah. Uh, yuck. And then that... Um, that's only, that's less than a week ago, too. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's a lot of travelling, eh? Harlow Rocks, good horse. Look, there's there's a, there's a lot on in this race. There's one that I absolutely love, but I'm yep. going to save it for my best bet, so I'm going to kick it back to you and say... I've got no opinion until I've got my best bet. As long as when you do your best bet, you let everybody know the multi that you've got on. Not not the figures, but what your multi is, okay? Because I was going to ask you, well, you can talk about the big multi that you've got on. Okay. Good. We'll get to that. Okay. Uh, I reckon there's no reason to get off positivity, but Kelly Alfarasha, I don't know. I thought it was really good in that run. I think OP might have got to the front a little bit too early and sort of gone shit what I think the horse went shit what do I do now and positivity just kicked back on the inside at Ellerslie and got the job done it was so tough though because positivity had to work during the race it got to the front so it kind of gives you no reason to get off it but I don't know I feel like they've they've set this horse for the race the goat last week said to me at the derby that this is a really really good horse it won't get beaten that day it did get beaten but um you know when people like the goat say that I think Ted was on it as well you sort of respect it, don't you? So I think this is a really good horse. And the runs, all of its runs have been really good. So it'll be set for this race. It'll be better than it was at Ellerslie a couple of weeks ago. So I'm prepared to have a crack at it at $4. Still bang on. was awesome coming from the back. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure. But, yeah, it was very, very good coming from the back. I remember Luke at Derby Day. After that run, I was I was lighting up for a beer. And he comes and he goes, fuck, mate, still bang on. Ran last, last to third. Get on early. It was on the futures. But it had already been crunched in. So I didn't bother. So... Yeah, people noticed that run. The TAB haven't missed it at $4.80 as well. It was um, 16 bucks. Yeah. Before and, that run. And then it came into eights, I think, like... Yeah, really quickly. Within Sixes, five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a big run. And I think it, yeah, <clears throat> should be ready. Interesting. Best sec- best sectionals out of that race were still bang on. Second best. Guess guess who it was out of that race. Second best sectionals. So like six, eight, six, four. Well, I can't remember who was in the race. Okay. Well, it was Livid Sky. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. These and two have been there like or thereabouts all season, eh? Yeah, it didn't look like it. And when you go back and look at the race, you go, well, how did it do that? But yeah, no, that was it. You wouldn't be surprised if those two runners run in the top three, eh? Um, they've been going really well all season. No, it wouldn't be. There's been a lot of people... <laughs> I wonder who your best bet is. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a lot, a lot of chat this week as well that that back up from Friday... Um, but not only the backup from Friday, the, the travel to Hawke's Bay, the cancellation, the travel back home, the travel to Topor, the travel back home, and then the travel to Trentham, which is a long way away, is a lot of work for a three-year-old filly to be doing. So to be honest, I mean, I could be completely wrong, but that'll make me not bet on anything that's done that. But pultritudinous in that race was outstanding, and I thought Sign of Peace was really good there too. So it's hard to know, but I just won't have a crack based on that. Yeah, there were great runs. So um, I sort of got told that... You consider like a trip in a truck like that where you're going away for a few hours because you've got to come back as well um, is like having a race. Um, and so like you go on an overnight trip, you know, you so you had a race, you go there, you race, you come back, you sort of almost had two races. You've got to do that twice. And then you've also got to jump on an overnight truck to get down to Trentham, especially if you're in the Cambridge mm. area. You sort of, <laughs> I mean, I don't know in math, but you've sort of almost had 15 races by the time you get to... Uh, 
Yeah, to train them. Sounds like hard work, eh? It'll be interesting to see what runs top three, and if it's all those races, all those runners that were at Ellerslie, you wouldn't be surprised based on that, would you? Yeah. Well, maybe they're rock hard fit, and they're just going to grind it out. I don't know. Mm. We'll see what you think shortly in the best bits, mate. But let's get to the comments. Hopefully everybody's been getting involved. Adam, mate, what have we got over here? Uh, we, we've got a bit here. If I go into the Facebook page, there's a lot of variation what people are after here, eh? Uh, from the top, I have uh, Steve, who's going uh, Trentham Race 8, Call a Friend, is what he's after. Mitchell's after uh, Caulfield uh, Race 8, Desert Lightning. Um, I've got the awesome. Pants Man here at Race 8, Trentham, Carly uh, Al Farasha. Mm. I absolutely butchered that. No, I no, that was good, mate. Uh, Scott's uh, with you guys uh, Race 7 He's backing Irish Legacy to win We've got uh, Braden here in Tauranga uh, Race 1 He's after Monsoon Night uh, Grayson's got a great bit here Which has uh, caused a bit of sad faces Warriors 1-12 to 12, Up you know, up the wires <laughs> uh, That's a that's, Good up the wires. that's pretty ballsy there uh, Trentham Race 5 We've got uh, Mercurial Actually, a lot in Trentham, which goes against it. We've got race four, in, uh, Scott's on Underbelly. We've got Kevin on Tokyo Tycoon in race seven um, at Trentham as well. Actually, a lot of it is Trentham. Good. Sam's on Trentham, race eight, call a friend. Uh, a couple of call a friend. What's call a friend? Call a friend. It's not bloody it's who wants hand. to be a millionaire, is it? Is, is there something we don't know here, guys? Mike yeah. Breslin. Uh, Samantha Wynn. A couple more. We've got... Tom's on Tokyo Tycoon, uh, Trentham. Adam's just following in Irish Legacy as well. This is, is a bit of common. Mm. Uh, this is a bit of good in common here at the moment. If I was just trying to go down a little bit more to see if we get a little something different. Uh, Toby's on uh, Tauranga, which I think the boys will love. Race four, Maria yes. Farina. He's a good human. And then we'll go for one of these last ones. I am going to, I can't say that one properly. We're going to go for Jack, who is after Rose Hill, race three. He wants a bit of fly, fly. Fly, fly. Oh, fly, yeah. Fly. That might be fly, one fly. of the lads' best bets later on as well, by the yeah. way. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of Trentham going on there, guys. There is. She was. Good luck. Not too many. Old. What's this call a friend, Dan? It's know. in the Oaks. Had one, uh, eight stars for one win. Um, probably uh, come out and. Hmm. Blow my multi. <laughs> Honestly, it's paying twenty one bucks. There's every chance to win at Trentham paying twenty one dollars, eh? Yeah, yeah. You might it's, it's an omen. You might just put yeah, go on. Put put a bit on it. Put a bit on it. Right oh, we will let somebody know, or Luke will let somebody know at around midday on Saturday who has won a hundred dollars on their best bet. Thank you so much for you guys contributing. I'm hoping that Adam's still in the comments as well, because hopefully I don't know if Ted's there. He might have some uh, queries over some of the information that we've sent as well. But uh, yeah, keep your comments coming in. As always, um, there was comment about Desert Lightning uh, in the All-Star Mile. Somebody's best bet at $21. So let's move to Australia because Mr. Brightside, Desert Lightning, Puncher, all Kiwis, all racing in the All-Star Mile. You having a bet, Dan? Uh, no, I think I'll sit back and watch this one. Uh, depending how I'm going, if my multi's landed, then I might have a crack at Desert Lightning top four. I think I've seen it was like $3.50. Uh, top four for Desert Lightning, maybe $4. Uh, that could be a bit of me. I could take a little bit of that. Um, look, when you hear Robbie Patterson say, oh, look, I would be happy with Pantera to just sort of run middle of the pack. Um, we're not going over there with any, um, you know, dissolution and what's going on. You think, okay, cool. Well, maybe they're in a bit of a pickle. Desert <laughs> Lightning is a true miler, and on a good track, he goes well. And I think maybe there's a chance that he could – set up for an upset. The only challenge with Desert Lightning is we've got, um, um, what's the other one? A genie? Pride of Jenny? Pride of Jenny, yeah. Yeah, and she's a front runner and loves to yeah. get along. And, you know, so that means that, ch like, really, Desert Lightning's going to have to take a, take a sit behind it and hopefully get a chance to maybe run past it. But um, I, I can see, I can see Desert Lightning get in the front, Pride of Jenny going in front of it. Uh, Mr. Brightside coming down the outside, but Desert Lightning getting one off and maybe stealing this. Um, but he's going to have to run sectionally absolutely out of his skin, even better than what he did on Karaka Million Night, um, to put this field away because Mr. Brightside over 1,600 has been unreal. Can you take a dollar eighty on Mr. Brightside? Like, this horse is so good, but I, I'm, I can't. 
I'm a bit gun shy from taking short odds on um, mm. sure things lately. Yeah. But Mr. Brightside, a dollar eighty is pretty good. But no, uh, short answer, no, I can't. Even it's like, last I'll look for some value somewhere else. Yeah. Even its last run, I was sort of with two hundred meters to go, going, oh shit. Might not win this, but then it just rallied the last 100 metres and smashed them. Yeah, look, if I'm out and out think that it's going to win, I'm going to look for some other value. Like, I'm going to mm. look in the power plays and see if I can get maybe Desert Lightning top four Mr. Brightside to win and see if I can get a bit of a price. You know, you might get 550 or $6. Then I'm willing to have a crack and, and take it on. But, you know, the, if you, the way I work is if I want to win a certain amount of profit, like, you have to have a pretty decent crack on Mr. Brightside to win that. And I don't know I'm willing to risk that much. I mean, I'm oh, sure afterwards yeah, yeah. I'll look at it and I'll go, oh, wow, like, look yeah, at that. Yeah. That was easy. Well, you lose if you if it loses, then all your punting money is gone. There's no fun. You might as well just have a crack at a few things. Yeah, absolutely. Desert Lightning, I, th- I, I don't know much about, like I don't look at the Australian form and stuff, but um, I, I think it's a really good horse. I think it's a really, really, really good horse. So I'd love to see it go over there and give them a shake and surprise them. If it ran a top three, that would be a f- hell of an effort. Yeah, well, the only times it's not won this preparation has been on off tracks. It's won every other start on a good track. Yeah, and it's beaten Legato over 1,600 metres who won the Australian Guineas. Yeah, okay, got a bit of a head start uh, coming around the corner, but that's not the horse's fault. It smashed Legato like it wasn't even a contest in that particular race. I'm not yeah. saying it's better than Legato, but it's got the ability, so um, why not? Absolutely. Puncher is also it's pretty pretty cool that that's going over there. And if Mr. Brightside wins, it's a Kiwi anyway. Is there anything before you need to go to the toilet, mate, that you like um, in Australia or New Zealand outside of the ones that we've discussed? Um, there, there was only one that I thought about, um, and this is purely because I was sort of a bit uh, bit dusted up after the Bears hit Ellerslie, and I sort of hopped in a uh, hopped in a cab and sp- st- probably chatted my ear off. The guy that was driving me was probably like, "Oh, who's this fucking idiot?" Um, <laughs> But um, as I was hopping in the cab, I backed this horse called Hell Have No Fury. It was paying eight fifty and two fifty or something like that, and I had a decent crack at it each way, just because of I uh, just sort of reading. I didn't know too much about it, but Annabelle Nisham, um, and it's in the Coolmore Classic Group One. Now there's a bit of value around it. It's twenty six dollars and seven dollars, so even top four you might get five bucks. Um, but it won really impressively, and I was I thought it was quite a good win. And it's only fit carrying fifty two kilos. Um, all the better horses in this race are carrying a lot of weight. So Zoo Gotcha, well not a lot of weight, but fifty seven kilos. Zoo Gotcha, James McDonald, Revolutionary Miss, Hinged, Tropical Squirrel, who won really impressively. Foxy Frida, you got some really, and then that Yonsei that won really impressively. I think it was at Caulfield or Flemington last start. It was at Caulfield, um, but. I think this uh, Hell Have No Fury, $26 and $4.50 for top four. I'll have a bit of that. Drawn three, I think this is a really good chance. That's a great name for a horse. Yeah. Hell Have No Fury. That's quite hard for a commentator to pronounce, isn't it? Speaking of commentators, we didn't get Matt Hill in the comments this week. Where was he? I don't know. Maybe uh, doing but, the research for uh, Big Weekend. But, but gun shy. Um, I found a race at Todonga, which I'm sure everybody will enjoy watching unless you have a bet. But I know there was a best bet that came out of uh, the comments. Maria Farina's in this race. I, I can't see why Maria Farina won't win this again. Todonga race four. Mate, Mustang Valley is carrying 60 kgs. It's opened at $10. Now it's 480. There's been no scratchings. Somebody knows something about Mustang Valley that we don't know because I think it's supposed to rain on Friday. Maybe there's supposed to be a bit more rain than we think. So maybe it's Mustang a good horse. With, yeah, very good horse. Ten dollars to four eighty. Yeah, you'll make scratch. fashion shoot and there's fashion well. shoots in there coming to three sixty. Carmen lines in there sticking at four uh, three eighty. St. Bathans ran second in the Rich Hill Mile. How this can, is a good race. Helena Baby's back as well. How can all those horses come in and shorten so much and and what? So they're all just going to start three dollars. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Because fashion shoot, yeah, four twenty into three sixty. But that Mustang Valley, that's a huge play. That's Three, a massive supposed play. to be carrying sixty three, going to be carrying sixty. But yeah, mate, Maria Farina, why would you get off her? You beat in Dragon Leap, the best horse in New Zealand. So you might as well fucking dig into that four twenty. I would have thought. Tarong is a good track for that as well. Like you only need a short. Sprint. She's got a very short sprint. It's a short straight. So if she gets the gap and she gets the launch. Uh, she can get in front and she can uh, put them away. She'll get the job done. Race for Tarong and Maria Farina. Righto, let's get to the best bets. Uh, we'll go one for one, shall we? But have you done the calculations? Do you start or do I start, mate? One. Just give us a second. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you go first. Righto, let's get into it. Ted's best bet for this 
weekend. Like we talked about, we wanted this bet to be blessed because Ted is so confident on it. He absolutely loves this horse. Trentham M4 Race 7 Irish Legacy boosted to $3.60. Impressive winner on debut at Topor over 1,300 metres and then a tragedy beaten at Ellerslie and the Group 3 Mufasa Stakes went third. The big roomy Trentham track will suit and the well-bred filly can finish over them in the run home. Irish Legacy, get 360 while you can because I'm sure the money will come. Wowza. So the GOAT's gone to Trentham meeting four, race two, a la Kate. $13 and $4. Wow. <laughs> Just watch the replay of his last rate. race, the GOAT says. All you need to see is that replay and then just load up. 13 and $4, eh? How good. Mate, I'm that... going to jump off this podcast right now and just going to whack it. Yeah, and those little videos that you've been pulling together of the best bets, eh? like, that'll be... That'll be good. Yep. $13. Can you believe it? That'll be amazing. Right, oh. Matty, Punt IQ, he has got us one this week, and he's gone to Rose Hill. Gee whiz, this is unusual uh, in a lot of ways. Matty's normally down in Melbourne, but he's gone to Rose Hill, race three, fly, fly. This was somebody else's best bet uh, in the comments as well. Held up on debut, then taken back from a wide gate and ran home very well last start. Draws nicely here, and the scratching of Anisa makes her... Very appealing if she can run up to her last start effort. That is Maddie Punt IQ, Rose Hill Race 3, Fly Fly. Thanks, as always, for getting that to us. Maddie, get on board. Dan, mate, let us know your best bet and let us know this multi that you've got going on. Dan's best bet. Uh, we're going to go to Trentham Meeting for Race 8, the Al Basalti Equine Dubai New Zealand Oaks. And I'm hoping I'm going to be banging my drum all the way to the totalizer to get paid here because I'm going for still bang on. I think this horse has been lined up perfectly for this race. I think it was given a little bit of a break at the right time. It came back, had sort of a, a bit of a, a warm-up run to just get into things. It came from last. Last start at Allersley. The best section was the eight, the six, the two. It was outstanding. I thought it was flying home behind, uh, behind Kelly Alfarasha. And the other one? Positivity. Positivity. Um, but I think now this horse looks like you step this up to 2,400, you put it on a good track, you put it at Trentham, it's going to be booming down the outside, and I think it's going to win with a leg in the air. Nice, mate. $4.80 is good odds for that too, eh? Great odds. And I was actually very happy to um, get the boosted odds of 3.6 into 4.8. I've still bang on, and I've had a real whack at that. So I'm, if uh, Ted's best bet gets home, uh, I'm going to be running around in circles. I'm going to be praying <laughs> that still bang on just bangs his lot. So you've got Irish legacy and still bang on on a big multi, haven't you? Yes. Good luck, mate. That should be good. I'm sure a lot of people will follow you into that. Righto, the Harness lads have come to us with best, best bets as well. The Scan Man, Saturday, Wyndham Harness, Race 3, Franco Ezra paying $4.50. I'm sure now the Scan Man's put it out. It's probably coming a little bit, but four fifty at the moment. Good workout, wins since getting it all wrong on debut. Looks a nice hope with good manners from a good draw. That Saturday, Wyndham Harness, Race 3, Franco Ezra, Scan Man's best bet. What's Fitz you got for us, Dan? Uh, Fitz, it looks like someone's deleted half of his thing. This in is here, complicated. So... Uh, I'll have to go down and just have a little oh, bit Oh, sorry, of a mate. I've, I've got it here. Oh, should, you do? Should, should I run with yeah, it? Yeah, you go. All that. right. <laughs> Fitzy's gone for a multi. Race seven. Addington tomorrow night. He's got a multi for us. Oscar Bonavina to win. He's taken the title of NZ1 Trotter. Thought he'd open a lot shorter than he has. $175 is tasty. Multi that into race 10. Audacity to place, uh, yeah, top three. So that's Oscar Bonavina win. Audacity in race 10 to place. Good bet, Dan? I think so. I don't know. I mean, I haven't really been uh, looking too much, but I'll back it. I'll be on. Holy shit. I've just got a text from Ted saying that um, the goat's best bet's crashed. Oh, oh gutted. That hurts. Oh, no. Righto. Well, we'll get watch the newsletter tomorrow. The goat will have a new one. All right. Let me get into it then. Kemi's best bet, Trentham, meeting for race five. The one and only Mercurial, $4.50. I'm going to risk it and go best bet Mercurial back to Trentham. Draws well. Spratt and Marsh combo was absolutely firing, has beaten the best sprinters, just needs to carry the weight and should steal it. Good each way bet all the way from Weddingtown, Kemi's best bet. <laughs> Weddingtown? Where's Weddingtown, eh? I don't know, somewhere down in the knacky, I think. You like that bet too, eh? I think Love it. it. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, good. Good work, Luke. Thanks very much for getting that through, mate. I'm going to go Tauranga race two. Not paying a lot, but CX Squi. I think that's how you pronounce it. Paying two dollars forty. This is a maiden, so it's a bit of a bit of a risk. But it's two runs have been so good, um, and and been a little bit uh, or done a few things wrong. So it's on debut, it ran second. I think it ran third last start, or maybe the other way around. Uh, it looks like a winner in the making. Happy to give it another crack. I think you could probably multi it with the Blessed Bet Irish Legacy just to give yourself a little bit of value. Or you could just bet into the um, into the bonus back market because it's race two um, and you could get you should get your money back for this paying two dollars forty. Tauranga, see Exqui in the La Creek colours. So hopefully it's as good as La Creek and can get the job done because it looks like it's due a win uh, very very shortly. So yeah, the best bets. Hopefully we go a little bit better than we did last week, mate. Absolutely, mate. Trentham's <laughs> going to pay us back. Hopefully. Absolutely, righto. Thanks very much, Dan. I know that you are absolutely busting. You're on your feet. You're ready to roll. We've had a couple of beers. It's been a very enjoyable night. Thank you very much to everybody that has tuned in. Good luck to everybody that's having a crack on the weekend. There's plenty of good racing to get stuck into and at Trentham um, and uh, Tauranga and over in Australia, of course. Make sure you check out our socials and the BGP app for all the events. Um, Dan, I'll let you have the last word, mate, because you don't normally get it. Yeah, well, I just want to say get your tickets. So if you're keen to come along to the events, we'd love to have you to any of them. Come to the Warriors. Come to the Race by Grins. Um, get stuck into any of the events. You see we're going to do the live stream down at the winning post, so grab some tickets, come along, have some beers. Um, and I guess lastly, if you win some money this weekend, chuck it into the Punters Club. Let's go. <laughs> Great idea. Perfect. See you later, team. See you next Thursday.